Hey, what's up? I am Ara, aka Aizibra, and welcome back to the channel. House of the Dragon is coming to HBO Max in less than a month, and promotion for the new series is in full swing. We finally got a look at the first official trailer, some behind-the-scenes shots, exclusive stills with Entertainment Weekly and The Hollywood Reporter, and some teasers. With all the new information coming out, it's led me to wondering, how much have we actually seen in the series? Instead of my usual trailer breakdown, I decided to switch it up a bit for this video. I'm going to try to piece together all that we have truly seen so far. If you are interested in my thoughts and breakdown of the official trailer, make sure to tune in to Direwolf City's upcoming live stream on our new YouTube channel linked below and in the card above somewhere. We will be going live this upcoming Sunday, July 24th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're watching this after, don't worry, you can still check the replay. We also will be hosting our live after shows on that channel Monday night starting August 22nd. Even though it seems like we have a lot of information on what to expect in the first season of House of the Dragon, after some further investigation, I noticed there's a lot they have not shown us. To break it down, I'm going to separate the footage and stills into different sections. Please be aware there will be spoilers from Fire and Blood. I am not using or discussing any potential leaks in this video, so let's get to it. Good news to my fellow Fire and Blood fans. We are getting a look at not only the Great Council of 101, but the Old King, the Conciliator himself, King Jaehaerys I. We get a glimpse of the daunting halls of Harrenhal, where the Great Council convened. Expect this scene to have a ton of Easter eggs regarding different house sigils, characters and more kind of a hot take here i would like this to be the cold open for the series similar to the prologue scene from game of thrones season one from the latest trailer we hear prince viserys mentioning a prophetic dream also known as a dragon dream the vision he has of placing his heirs on the throne most likely occurs before they announce the ruling of the great council due to the fact that if he was already king it would be expected for his heir to succeed him Spoiler alert, he gets chosen to succeed King Jaehaerys during the reign of the Old King. His last hand, Sir Otto Hightower, brought his daughter Lady Alicent to court. While she was there, she used to read to the Old King. I believe this shot of young Princess Rhaenyra and Alicent in the Godswood and them praying together is to establish the relationship they had when they were girls. They were friends during the days of the old King Jaehaerys, however things changed with the ascension of King Viserys. With Viserys' rise, he endowed titles on family and favorites. Which brings us to our next topic, Prince Daemon Targaryen, the king's younger brother, son of King Jaehaerys' second son, Prince Balon, and his daughter, Princess Alyssa Targaryen. Prince Daemon is going to be a central figure in this series, and we get a lot of him in the promotional material. Let's get into Prince Daemon, aka the Rogue Prince, aka Prince of the City, aka Lord Fleabottom. Daemon's time on the small council was brief and a bit contentious. However, he did succeed at transforming the City Watch into a proper task force. He upgraded their armor, weapons, and gave them all gold cloaks, which is where the nickname Gold Cloaks comes from. We get a lot of shots of Damon leading the City Watch in the promotional material. During his time as Lord Fleabottom, he took on a mistress known as Missaria, aka the White Worm or Lady Misery. Damon was married at this time, but really didn't care for his wife, Rhea Royce, or the Vale in general. He eventually gets Missaria pregnant and plans to uphold the Targaryen tradition and give the unborn babe a dragon egg. This leads to a standoff that we have now seen multiple shots of between Prince Daemon, Missaria, and the Gold Cloaks versus Sir Otto Hightower, members of the King's Guard, and the Archmaester. Spoiler alert, he doesn't get to keep the egg. The fallout of this incident leads Daemon to leave court and brings us into one of our major conflicts we will see in season one. The War of the Stepstones. During the reign of the Old King and currently with King Viserys, relative peace existed in the realm. 
with most people of living age not seeing any form of battle. Many young men, like Prince Damon, wanted to make a name for themselves by seeking glory through battle. After leaving King's Landing, he teams up with the Lord of the Tides, Lord Corlys Velaryon, aka the Sea Snake, to take control of the Stepstones, a series of islands off the coast of Dorne currently being overrun by the Triarchy, which is made up of Lys, Mir, and Tyrosh, as well as some pirates. We see a lot of shots of the fighting in the Stepstones. And to be honest, I believe for Season 1, this is going to be the only battles we really see. Don't worry though, after this there are battles galore, if that's what you're really into. After the defeat of Kragus Crabfeeder, the leader of the Raiders on the Stepstones, by Prince Daemon, he proclaims himself as King of the Stepstones and Narrow Sea. As we can see a shot of him returning to court with the crown on his head. Damon plays a lead role in the dance, but alas, he's obviously not the only one. So let's move on to another major character in this series, Sir Kristen Cole. In 104 AC, there was a great tourney at Maiden Pool where Sir Kristen Cole distinguished himself from many opponents, including Prince Damon himself. I believe the show is going to deviate from the book in this regard as it appears this tourney is being held at King's Landing. As we can see in the shot of the tourney ground, it appears the dragon pit is in the background. Side note, this shot of one of the dragons flying over King's Landing with the dragon pit in the background is spectacular. Back to Sir Christian Cole, who we see wielding his weapon of choice, a morning star, against Prince Daemon, who is wielding the Targaryen ancestral Valyrian seal sword, Dark Sister. Sir Christian Cole impresses a lot of people at this tourney, including Princess Rhaenyra. The two eventually form a close friendship, and he becomes her sworn sword and personal protector. Eventually, he becomes a member of the Kingsguard, and I believe we see him being chosen in the most recent trailer, while he and Rhaenyra make googly eyes at one another. Unfortunately, this friendship will take a sour turn, which brings us to our next topic. The Matter of Succession At the time of his ascension, King Viserys was married to his cousin, Aima Aaron, and they had one child together, the princess Rhaenyra. After the Great Council of 101, which is the reason Viserys is king, a precedent was set, not a law, but a preference for male primogeniture, which is why Princess Rhaenys and her son, Laenor Velaryon, were passed over for the throne. Princess Rhaenys is the daughter of King Jaehaerys' firstborn son, Prince Aemon, and his aunt, Jocelyn Baratheon, and Laenor is her son with Lord Corlys Velaryon. However, as we see in the trailer, the matter of succession is brought up during the small council meeting. Based on the Great Council of 101, Prince Daemon, the king's brother, should be named heir and Prince of Dragonstone. However, the king's hand, Sir Otto Hightower, who despises Daemon, did not want him anywhere near or around the throne, let alone named the heir. Queen Ama was still alive at this time, and Viserys was still young enough to produce a male heir, but Otto was insistent on Princess Rhaenyra being named the heir. We actually see Rhaenyra serving as her father's cupbearer during this scene. After much debate, King Viserys agrees and names Rhaenyra his heir. We see a lavish ceremony for Princess Rhaenyra's investiture as Princess of Dragonstone, which does not please Daemon at all. Daemon had always doted on his knees, and now with her being named the heir, he sees her as his path to the throne. Now will be a good time to point out that the show is going to deal with some heavy topics, grooming being one of them, as we will see with Prince Daemon, who is also Princess Rhaenyra's uncle. Also, if you haven't noticed by now, there's quite a lot of incest in this family, but you know, Targaryen exceptionalism, am I right? Princess, Prince Daemon and Princess Rhaenyra's time as the only two potential heirs to the throne was short-lived, though, as the wedding season begins in the series. So far, we have seen footage of two royal weddings, but there are definitely more pending. For starters, King Viserys and Lady Alicent Hightower. With the passing of Lady Ama Arryn, 
We see in the trailer King Viserys is urged to take a new wife. A few potential suitors are brought up. However, the king had a choice in mind already. His hand's daughter, the Lady Alicent Hightower. We haven't seen their wedding scenes as of yet, but we get shots of them together in the early days of their union. We have several shots of Princess Rhaenyra's wedding to her cousin, Lord Laenor Velaryon, which looks like it will be a splendid and grandiose event. The Velaryons are the wealthiest family in Westeros, as we can see at how lavish the event is and how amazing they look. At this wedding, a newly single and broody Prince Daemon is sitting at the dais, and I believe this is when he starts to fall for Laenor's older sister and also his cousin, Lady Lena Velaryon. They eventually get married, which I believe we will see early in the season. So far, we do not have any shots with them together, though. There will be plenty of other weddings going on, but one of the most troublesome that we get a glimpse of is that between Princess Rhaenyra and her uncle, Prince Daemon. I know you're thinking, wait, didn't she just say they married the Velaryon siblings? Well, as we can see in other footage, the Velaryon siblings were not long for this world. And in their grief, Rhaenyra and Daemon turn to each other and secretly wed. Their union leads us right into the next major conflict. But let's rewind it back a bit before the wedding of Prince Daemon and Princess Rhaenyra, as a lot of the tension that will later blossom into the impending civil war took root beforehand. As I mentioned, Sir Otto Hightower was very pressed about naming Princess Rhaenyra as the heir over Prince Daemon, and the king obliged him. However, Sir Dodo cut his nose to spite his face when his own daughter married the king and gave birth to three sons and a daughter. But King Viserys refused to change the line of succession. Sir Otto and Queen Alicent were not friendly with Princess Rhaenyra and had no intention of letting her and her kids take the throne over Queen Alicent's sons, as we can see them beginning to plot with one another. Tensions come to a boil during the funeral of one of the Velaryon siblings when a fight breaks out between Queen Alicent's son, Prince Aemond, and Rhaenyra's sons with Laenor, quote-unquote, that result in Aemond losing his eye, but also claiming the mighty Vagar as his dragon, which he gleams to be a fair trade-off. We see Alicent attempting to attack the children with Rhaenyra defending them, and we hear Rhaenyra say in the trailer, now they see you for who you are. Well, this is when the factions start to draw the lines in the sand and we move to the central conflict of the series, the Blacks versus the Greens. The factions of the Targaryen Civil War get their names from the dresses Princess Rhaenyra and Queen Alicent wore to a great feast. Queen Alicent in green and Princess Rhaenyra in black. I believe we see the gowns in the trailer, but let's get into the teams. On the Blacks, we have Princess Rhaenyra, her husband, Prince Daemon, their cousin, Princess Rhaenys, and her husband, Lord Corlys Velaryon, along with Princess Rhaenyra and Prince Daemon's children, which combined is seven kids. There are other lords on Team Black, but we don't have all day to go through all of them. On the Greens, who support Prince Aegon, we have his mother, Queen Alicent, and his grandfather, Sir Otto Hightower, his two brothers, Princes Aemond and Daeron, and his wife and sister, Princess Helena, along with their three children and Lord Commander of the King's Guard, Sir Kristen Cole. Again, there are other lords on this team, but we don't have all day. So far, besides being seen in the background of shots, the only sighting we have of Prince Aegon is from the behind-the-scenes images released. We have yet to see Princess Helena and Prince Daeron. The official trailer was our first full look at Aemon, so maybe we'll get more footage of them at a later date. To wrap this all up, we have been shown quite a lot of the main plot beats for the first season. However, there's so much more we have yet to see. I won't divulge too much on what we haven't seen to avoid more fire and blood spoilers. We do know there will be quite a bit of a time jump within season one with a 10 year jump midway through. Even though we have a fair amount of scenes before and after the time jump, there's so much more to see. Regarding the timeline of the season, we know the premise of the Dance of the Dragons is a civil war, which leads me to believe we will see the death of King Viserys in season one. My guess being this will happen around episode nine, 
which is usually the big episode of the season, like Ned Stark's death in season one or the Red Wedding in season three of Game of Thrones. We still have so many characters to meet that play their part in the wars to come that I am excited to see. I personally want to see more scenes with Lady Lena Valarion, who we haven't seen much of. Let me know in the comments who you are looking forward to seeing more of, or at least seeing in costume for the first time. For more coverage on House of the Dragon, don't forget to subscribe to, well, here, and to the official Direwolf City YouTube channel, and check out our preseason coverage starting this upcoming Sunday, July 24th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And our after shows on Monday night starting August 22nd, the day after the premiere. Don't forget to like and subscribe to both channels and hit the notification bell for future uploads. See you next time. Bye.